Internet bros for years have been asking me to make EDC videos. More recently, viewers like Taylor Ong and me. I mean, not me, but someone else on YouTube named me. I mean, not as in, like, Advanced Knife Bro, but, like, just, just me. Like, put me, put quotes around me. Okay, now that we've cleared that up, let's EDC. And I have no idea why anyone is interested in my everyday carry theory, but I'll do it anyway. So here's normally what I carry. My phone. My Leatherman. A pocket knife. A flashlight. My keys. And my wallet. That seems like a lot, but I do wear a suit to work. My iPhone 6 Plus, which is really too big of a phone, is in an OtterBox commuter. It protects my phone well, covers the ports, but is not waterproof or water resistant. I generally don't swim with my phone, and people don't often pee on me, so it doesn't matter. Okay, I, I probably got a thumbs down for that. I drop my phone all the time, and it keeps it safe. Of course, with the exception of a direct screen hit, which has yet to happen to me in my, I don't know, four years of carrying a smartphone. So like I mentioned earlier, I work a tech job. I do sound and lighting and video. I don't carry a lot on me every day compared to other people like me. Just some basic things that get me by. First off, my Leatherman. I've carried my Leatherman tools for nearly 20 years now. From days I've wasted in film school to days I've wasted in my job, where I use no skills I learned in film school. I used to carry my Leatherman PST. It had a flathead screwdriver, wireless mic tweaker tool, Phillips head, screwdriver, pliers, and the wire cutter doodad. In about 2012, I decided to upgrade to the Wave because I like nice things. My main problem with the PST, and I didn't notice it years ago, was that none of the tools locked. I didn't want more stability when screwing or cutting. So I went with the Wave. The Wave has all locking tools, files, an assortment of blades from screwdrivers, larger screwdrivers, smaller screwdrivers. Plus they have a 25 year warranty. So if you break the flathead part like I did, just send it to them and they fix or replace it. No preguntas asked. For most people, it's all you'll ever need. But it is a bit heavy for pocket carry. I carry mine under my suit jacket in its velcro pouch so it stays hidden. There is a detachable pocket clip available, but it's a little heavy and a little bulky for what I like to carry in my pockets. Oh yeah, it opens beer. My pocket knife, my Leatherman blade, is a tad too small for some tasks, or at least I think it is. Or maybe it's not and I just think knives are cool. For several years I carried the Spyderco Endura 4 because it's big, light, and durable. I reviewed it a while back, so go watch that when you get a second. But lately it doesn't see much rotation in my pocket because I have a lot of new knives. About the only thing really I don't like about it is that it has a slow deployment. Now it's not that I hate that about it, it's just that I have knives with faster deployment. And I don't like using the zip tie trick, so please don't suggest that in the comments. It's a great camping and general purpose knife. These days though I do carry a few other knives that are mostly more expensive and have faster deployment. I do have a few basic rules about what I carry though. I like the knife to weigh four ounces or less. I carry in my jeans and sometimes, well more often than not, a suit pocket. And at work it has to be fairly thin and a lighter blade. My paramilitary 2 and Yojimbo are a tad on the heavier side of my rule. But I love the deployment of the compression lock and the middle finger deployment. They make for excellent fidgeting knives. Now, my 941 and my 765 Benchmade are two others I carry often. Those are both lighter than the Spydercos, but I like the Spydercos a little bit more. I like blades between 3 and 4 inches, so they work well if I have to cut up food or boxes or cotton tie line or duct tape or whatever. I also like my hands to fit the handle well without crowding, and usually blades over 3 inches have appropriate sized handles for me. When I'm doing yard work or camping, sometimes I bring heavier knives, which you've seen me review on this channel. But most of the time I carry lighter, smaller knives. And by that I mean, you know, three inches, under four ounces, somewhere around there. These are my main knives because of blade length, weight, deployment, handle, size, in that order usually. And someone's like, what about blade steel, bro? All right, I got to be honest about this. Blade steel really isn't super important to me, as long as the blade doesn't 
chip easy or roll easy or whatever and it holds its edge for a few weeks for my light use most of the time that's fine all of these knives are adequate blades for the tasks I mentioned I liked my Endura 4s VG10 for years and I'd be lying if I thought the Buller M390 or the S90V in my more expensive knives improve my life in a meaningful way I don't mind sharpening my blades my wallet only last year did I decide to buy a decent wallet. I bought a $120 Filson at their annual winter sale online for about 25 bucks. It uses full grain leather, is guaranteed for life, and it isn't too bulky. I commute, meaning I sit on my ass for several hours a day. I don't like to have a big wallet in my back pocket because it hurts. I keep my cards and my cash down to a minimum, and it holds everything I need. I decided to go with a better constructed wallet after I got sick of throwing out the cheap name brand Timberland, Levi's, or Fossil, or whatever bullshit you find at Marshall's or department stores. Those wallets suck and generally don't last more than a few years. Now I did dabble on a brand called Phil's Wallets that I found out about on Reddit, but it was too minimalist for me. I carried too many cards and it wouldn't hold it properly so it became misshapen after a while. My Philson wallet though hasn't had those issues because it's a bifold and has more storage space. I wish it had a cash pocket, but honestly, I don't ever have any money on me, and I'm not interested in buying another wallet. There are plenty of niche places online that make very nice wallets, and it seems a nice one is really going to set you back about $50 to $150, unless you get a good deal like me. My flashlight. I've been reviewing flashlights on this channel longer than anything else. So some viewers ask me, what are my favorites? What is your everyday carry? First off, let me tell you what I require. I like good run times, shortcuts to the modes I use most often, meeting an electronic switch light, great low end mode spacing, and moonlight modes. Oh, and something that runs off rechargeable lithium ion batteries. I don't use alkalines and I don't use lithium primaries because I hate throwing batteries away and alkalines ruin your flashlights. I like it to be pocketable inside my suit jacket pocket. Now for some flashlights are a bit harder to pocket carry than knives because they're larger in diameter. I get that, not everyone needs one. But my two favorite lights are my Zebralite SC600 Mark III, and to a lesser extent, my Copper Olite S2. The Olite is heavier because it's made out of copper and has a cool tint, so I carry it less, mostly because of the weight, though. I like my Zebralite SC600 Mark III because it's fairly light, small, and has a good tint. I plan on getting a smaller Zebralite soon, so look forward to that review in a month or two when the newest AA Zebra Light flashlight becomes available. I've pre-ordered it. Finally, the keychain. I carry a Nightcore tip. I like the tint, I like the modes, but I have to lock it out. When you lock it out, the parasitic drain is higher. The cool white version that I have doesn't do that, but I don't really like cool white lights. So if you like this video, subscribe to my channel. Give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment. Thanks for watching.